Hello. Hello, hello. I haven't done a live in so long, you guys. I'm like low-key freaking out. Like when you haven't done it in a while and you're like, oh my God, I'm so nervous. So funny. Okay. So I thought I'd just do a little, hi Kim. I thought I'd just do a little live to one, show off some of the colors. So um, my, all my threads haven't arrived yet, uh, but that's fine. Um, Cause I do have some other ones that I can use until they do. So no worries there. And I thought I'd show you um, how to transfer the pattern about the free pattern. We'll do more of this um, on the first day of the stitch along for the free pattern. That's like the actual first day. So don't worry about if you haven't done it yet or if you've got questions or whatever, we'll do that on Saturday. Uh, but for the paid stitch along, you actually do need to have uh, the pattern on your hoop before the first day. So yeah, Kim says, I low-key freak out about talking on lives always. Yeah, I just think like when you do it every day, it like becomes like normal. And then, yeah, it's just like, well, you just do it, don't you? And plus there's like things to talk about. Whereas like on like the setup days, I'm always a bit like, don't forget this and don't forget that. And oh my God, what about this? And you want everyone to like understand, you know? So I like to show it a couple different ways. So the first thing uh, always is putting the fabric in the hoop. So obviously I've already done it on this one, um, but I can just quickly show you. Hi Meg, on a smaller hoop because uh, I've already got that one done. So what you're gonna find on your hoop, this is a little three inch hoop. Hi Meg. Kim says, I hate my prime Stoke on Trent accent. <laughs> don't hate where you come from. You're fine. Uh, what you'll find is a little screw thing like this. And then that loosens and tightens your hoop. So what you're going to want to do, let's move out the way, is put the inside hoop down and put this one over top, just like that. And then tighten this one back up just a little bit, and then pull all the way around. I've got to do my nails today too. They're like really grown out. Embarrassing. So pull, 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 pull. And then tighten again. And then pull your fabric again. So for bigger hoops, I like to put it kind of like, this is like, my stomach, yeah? Put it right up against your stomach and really give it a good pull um, to make sure that it's tight. And you want it to have this like drum-like sound. You want it to be really nice and tight. And that's why I always say when you choose your fabrics, choose something that's um, no stretch. So you don't want to have like a t-shirt. You don't want to have any kind of like lycra or anything like that. You want it to be like a cotton, linen, um, cotton linen blend. Some people use. Sorry, skipping ads on YouTube. Some people use um, like an old bed sheet or a, cur a curtain. Um, you can use like an old shower curtain if you need to. So there's lots of fabrics that are no stretch just around your house. If you feel like, I don't know what kind of gay, I don't know what to do. You can use old tablecloth. Um, I know a lot of people have started that way, and um, it, that's fine. So there you go. So I like to just make sure it's really nice and tight. And again, you've got that nice, tight drum sound. Yeah? So after you've got your fabric in your hoop, ta-da, it'll look like this. I feel like one of those cooking shows where they, like, put it together and then they like put it in the oven and they're like, and you're going to bake it for 45 minutes. And then right under it in the same oven that's been already baking and is already finished, they pull out like a finished one. <laughs> Ta-da! So I'm just making sure here before I get started to trace it because if you trace it, if you trace your pattern onto the fabric and your fabric is not tight, then you're going to get your pattern to be... Um, 
like distorted in some areas, especially if you're working on text, which we are not, but still. So I'm going to go now to how to transfer the pattern onto your fabric. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. There's no right or wrong way. In the, the paid pattern, this is kind of what you get. So you get a black and white one and you get a colored one. And the colored one has some suggested colors. Yours will be on its side like this. And the color numbers are down on um, like in a line, like in a row there. So I've got the black and white one because this is the easiest way um, to do it. You can either take your pattern like this and flip over your hoop on the back and put it right down and you can see it really well. Obviously this is not the right size for this one because I've used like an old copy that I just had laying around. And then you can use these Frixion clicker pens. Sometimes they have a cap on them, but mine are just clicker. Um, and they erase with the blow dryer. So it's just any kind of heat or like a really low iron they'll erase. Um, so you're just going to erase it on that way. My favorite way to do it because I'm lazy and I don't want to flip the fabric and the hoop over. So obviously if you do it this way, all your writing will be underneath. Some people will stitch like this and that's fine. I prefer to stitch this way. So my hands kind of hold the inside of the hoop like this and like in here and here. So if you can see underneath, that's kind of how I hold it. Uh, yeah, I prefer it on the top. So if I did it this way, you'd have to take the fabric out of the hoop, yeah, flip it over so that the drawing's on the top and then re-hoop it. So just keep that in mind if you want to do it that way. Uh, but my favorite way is to cut it out like this. So you've got just the circle. Like I said, um, that one's not that one's not the right size. This one is. So what you'll do is you'll put it underneath it like this. And then you can either just use your hand on the back to trace it all the way, or you can use some blue tack, which of course I don't have it, but you can use some blue tack and put a couple pieces of blue tack around the edges so that the paper stays and you just kind of press it up, press it up into the wood there. So then when you flip it over, uh, the paper won't fall out and then you can trace it that way. And of course there's a third and fourth way. <laughs> so you can um, stick this up to a window so up and down like this on your window and the light will shine behind and you can go like that and then you can trace it or you can use your computer screen, iPad, uh, MacBook screen, literally anything, anything that you want. That's the wrong one. Hold on. Anything that's got a screen to it, basically, except your phone because that. That won't work, will it? And you can blow it up to the right size and then trace it. Trace it that way. And then um, you can get the screen to stop moving on your iPad if you push it three times. And it's called guided access. So you can go into your settings on your iPad and then um, do guided access and then I've just drawn a circle around where I don't want it to move and then there you go you end it by pushing the home button three times so there's that I'm actually not going to trace it all the way because um, it does take quite a bit of time and I'm not really sure if you really want to see that um, the only tricky part in the pattern that I had a bit of trouble with myself is this right here because there's some overlapping. So what I would suggest is doing the leaves first and then coming back and doing this over top. But most everything else, maybe a bit over here, most everything else is okay. And you can tell 
when it's stitched up and all colored in, it's really not that chaotic. Like there's more white space than you would think based on the drawing, if you know what I mean. And to be fair, this one is a little bit different, but yeah. Okay, so what I've done is with the colors is I've kind of got like a couple, I think it's eight greens. Yeah, I've got eight different greens. Yeah, eight different greens and then eight colors. Um, but you do not need that many because of course you can use colors more than once. And then you can do more details or less details depending on how comfortable you feel. So like, for example, this one, I've got two different colors for these leaves, but of course you could just use one color and do the techniques in the same color. Do you know what I mean? So there's that. Uh, like I said, not all of my anchor threads have come, but some of them have arrived. So I've got these ones kind of for the free pattern. These are the ones that have come for the free pattern. So I chose a bit of a mix. And then obviously black. And then I've chose a nice mix for the paid pattern. And you can tell, I said that I've got eight greens and there's only five here. So I'm still missing some of those. Um, but in the meantime, I kind of put together a little set. of just some lovely colors that you could pick. And really all I thought of was just some dark, some medium, and some light. And then just whatever your favorite colors are for the flowers. Um, there's no right or wrong answer for these. So it's literally just which ones do you like? Do those. And then the girls will just be outlined in black. So they'll be just black and white. So there we go. So that's pretty much it for the paid pattern. For the free pattern, you're going to be doing the same thing that you did before, but with the girls. And again, on Saturday, I'll go through all of this. We'll choose one, we'll put it on and everything. This is just kind of the sample that I'm working with. And then you can Choose how big you want it. If you like the size, then you can trace it on. If you'd rather have it bigger, of course, on your iPad or computer screen, you can make it bigger. That's fine too. And yeah. I kind of think that's it. I'm not really sure what else to go over. So you've got your threads. It's just your favorite colors some greens for the greenery. Definitely one of these Frixion pens. Of course, you can use pencil if you wanted to. I like the um, 05 instead of the 07 or 10 because it just makes a little bit of a thinner line, which I quite like. Um, but any of them will work. I know you can find them at Sainsbury's here in the UK. You can get them online from Amazon and um, you can get them at Target. So lots of, I got these ones at Target. Lots of different places that you can get them. Um, of course, you'll need a needle. I lost my favorite needle in <laughs> America. So I've just chosen a, another one from the, the vintage box that I got at a boot sale. Uh, obviously, scissors. Good morning, Lucy. And I think that's it, really. Um, I always get a lot of questions about my hoop stand, so I'll go ahead and show you that as well. The hoop stand, I got mine for a fiver at a charity shop, but I know that Hawthorne Handmade makes, makes them as well, and a lot of people have gotten them from Hawthorne Handmade. So this is a lap stand. You're meant to sit on this part, like put it underneath your leg. So imagine like two legs here, yeah? And then this right here is where you 
clamp your hoop. I took it to America with me because I had to do the feeling festive stitch along. So you just shove the top it like that and then tighten these. I know that Hobbycraft used to have them, but when I went in the other day, they didn't have any more. They only had like the really big, um, like the kind that have like the two feet and then a really long pole. So I think they're meant to go like underneath your sofa or like put your feet on each of them to like hold it down. So this is just the lap one. So this is what you'll see when we do the lives and you'll get zoomed in on one of the whichever piece that we're working on that day. So yeah, I think that's it. I use two cans of soup to, <laughs> to keep mine down because obviously it's meant to go under your, under your kind of thigh. You're meant to sit on it. Um, so that's that. I think that's it though. Do we have any other questions about the stitch long? The paid one or the free one. Um, the free one, we're going to set up and everything on Saturday. So that's the very first day of the stitch along uh, for the free one. So there are two stitch alongs happening. I hope that this doesn't get confusing. Um, but we'll set up the girl only and we'll do our hoop and we'll transfer the girl and everything like that on Saturday. So this is just a little like sneak peek of some of the things that we'll do. Um, but in the free one, you can choose where you want to put all of these things. So I'll show you how to draw this and then you can put it anywhere here, there, 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 and anywhere you can put them anywhere. So we'll have a little bit of each one. So you'll be drawing them each day. So you definitely need a pen or a pencil um, and then we'll be stitching it that day as well. So don't freak out. It'll be super easy. It's really not that complicated. It looks much more difficult, but that's because there's literally every day we're doing something except for Saturdays. So you'll still have a video on Saturday, but it just won't be um, like a stitching video. It'll be like a catch-up day. And then every day so far, um, except Saturdays, we'll do a stitching on the big one as well so there we go guys I think that's it from me just a really easy peasy prep video all the videos will be saved to YouTube um, and I'll make a playlist for each one so there'll be the uh, ladies in the garden stitch along which is the paid one and then there'll be the free February stitch along one which is the free one and then you can find the videos on YouTube and the YouTube is youtube.com slash the barmy fox the barmy fox and yeah i think that's all <laughs> so i hope you enjoy your day i hope i haven't been rambling on for too long and if you have any questions let me know and i'll do my best all right i'll talk to you later have a good day lucy bye